Life History of the Late Mrs. Justice Cecilia Afan Krantinado. Mrs. Justice Cecilia Krantinado was born on May 24, 1936, in Asin in Suta, her hometown, to Mr. Philip A. Gazi and Madame Ajwa Konsa. After her preliminary education, she continued her schooling at Ola and Holy Child Secondary School, Cape Coast. She then went abroad for further education. After her preparatory studies, she entered the University of Hull, where she distinguished herself with merit and credit. She obtained the Bachelor of Laws degree with honors in 1963 and was called to the English Bar. Cecilia returned home in 1964 and first engaged in private legal practice in the firm of Opokwe Champo and Company. There, she immediately showed great promise, rising to eminence at the bar. Marital relations and responsibilities moved her to Accra soon after, and she decided to join the judicial service. She started as a district magistrate in July 1966. Her rise in the service was quite meteoric, and she was ultimately appointed a high court judge in 1975. The legendary, Lord, the legendary judge, Lord Denning, once observed that the law is made up of bold spirits and timorous souls. There is no doubt that Justice Cecilia Krantinadu, Justice Kweju Ejapon, and Justice Fred Kokusa Kudye were all bold spirits. Mrs. Justice Kwantinadu was one of three female superior court justices at the time she became a high court judge in 1975. At the time of her death, only one female had been added to the number. Over 15 of her judgments are reported in the Ghana Law Reports. Popular among them is Latte and Latte Company Limited versus Benny and another, delivered in 1980 and reported in 1987. 88, one Ghana law report, 590. In that case, Justice Quantinado spanned areas of procedure with respect to adjournments, striking out an action or pleadings and appearance. It also covered the differences between void and voidable judgments and the professional conduct of a solicitor. She had a sharp and penetrating brain for unraveling problems. Her judgments follow systematic, logical reasoning. She was cut out for the profession she chose. She was a keen worker and toiled night and day to produce judgment, decisions and judgments that would forever stand out for their elegance of reasoning. Hear what she had to say when during the AFRC era, proceedings for a writ of Hebrews couples were brought before her in the case of Republic versus Director of Prisons and another, expert in Shackleford, 1981, Ghana Law Report 554. In her judgment, she observed at page 576 as follows, and I quote, one must not lose sight of the fact that in a revolution a lot of things happen and nobody questions the makers of such good details. However, when they seek to clothe their actions with the responsibility of legality, then sitting as a judge, I will have to look at these things clothed with legality, with reference to the norms of legality, with which we are familiar, and the tests of validity that are applicable to the acts of all legal tribunals. We are all witnesses to what happened during the AFRC era. People use that period as an opportunity to settle all scores. A lot of atrocities were committed in the name of the AFRC. Those who were exposed were punished, but others went clean through the net. If the acts of those who went through the net were to be brought up to the court now, can the transitional provisions be pleaded in the name of justice in defense of such an act? It, sure, it was surely not. She never rested until she found to her satisfaction that she had arrived at the bottom of the matter. It is beyond any doubt that it is this keenness and thoroughness in her work 
that led to her premature death. She is indeed a matter for the rule of law. She was the first judge to have questioned the transitional provisions of the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, inserted in the 1979 Constitution, and set free an AFRC convict. She also decided a case involving the rioting workers of Ghana Industrial Holding Corporation, Europe, who attacked parliament in the Third Republic. Mr. Matekwe, one of the leaders of the workers, subsequently became a member of the Provisional National Defense Council, the ruling government at the time of her death. He was tried and convicted of his role in the murder. Cecilia was an affable and kind woman, had time for everyone, and was prepared to share and assist in solving everyone's problems and burdens. But above all, and that is the most important part of her life, she was a good mother and wife. She maintained a healthy balance between her family, life, and work without giving excuses on either front. Cecilia was a keen Christian and Catholic who was ready to evangelize for the church. She was a member of many organizations in the church. She predeceased both her parents. She also left behind a son and daughters, Dr. Gustav Brantingadu, her husband, before whose very eyes she was adopted, never recovered from the shock and felt haunted daily by that spectacle. As a result, he also succumbed to death. Inscription on the erected bust at the forecourt of the Supreme Court building in Accra, and I quote, Mrs. Justice Cecilia Frank Rantinadu will be remembered for her robust and alert mind, courage of conviction, impeccable integrity, keen sense of justice, and her firm control of her court. She was a deeply religious mother, wife, and judge. May the soul of Mrs. Justice Grantina Frank Grantina rest in perfect peace.